little has changed on the Joyce Ranch in Hawaii County. It's a rite of spring in the Hawaii's. Cowboys have gathered up their cattle for decades and branded in the same corrals as their ancestors. Since 1865, 143 years ago, the Joyce Ranch has endured here on Sinker Creek near the Idaho and Oregon state borders. Just over the mountain from the Joyce Ranch, cowman Tim Lowry runs a 300-head cow-calf operation. Both ranches rely on public grazing in the Owyhee Mountains. And the public grazing allotments make the ranches whole. Through it all, Lowry and Paul Nettleton, manager of the Joyce Ranch, have survived. But 10 years ago, a relative newcomer to the Hawaii's began a challenge to the cowboys unlike any they've faced so far. That newcomer was the federal government, and the issue was water rights on public lands. The year before it was a state, definitely long before BLM was an agency. The Joyce has always had stock. He was a he was basically a farmer, but you know, farmers had chickens, pigs, dairy cows, everything. He had good horses. Paul Nettleton's great-grandfather, Matt Joyce, settled on Sinker Creek after the Civil War. Rancher Tim Lowry's operation spans the western end of Jordan Creek near Jordan Valley, Oregon. Lowry and his predecessors have ranched the land since the 1870s. Public grazing and the accompanying water rights have been important to both ranches ever since. And attorneys Michael Van Zant and Elizabeth Evans of San Francisco were brought on board to defend the Owyhee cattlemen. The issue that came up primarily was that uh, back in the 1870s, 1880s time frame, the predecessors of both LU and Joyce Livestock had established water rights uh, on federally administered land, and this would have been public land back then uh, that uh, was essentially administered by the Department of Interior. Uh, in uh, the year after the Civil War ended, uh, the Congress passed a law called the Mining Act of 1866. The Mining Act, like the Homestead Act that followed, promoted settlement of the West, encouraging settlers, miners, and ranchers to homestead the West and put the vast land into production. Back then, Congress was looking for a way to pay off the massive Civil War debt. The ranchers and thousands just like them braved Indians, droughts, wildfires, and floods to settle the land and feed the hungry and growing nation. Home movies from the 40s on the Joyce Ranch paint a picture of ranching bliss. The Hawaii ranchers prospered through the Depression and the war and through the tough Hawaii winters and scorching hot summers and the toughest times imaginable. But in 1999, they met their match in court against their fiercest adversary yet, the BLM. The government, yeah, just to see if they could break us, you know. See if we're, where we, at what point we give up. But the Joyce's and Lowry's knew the law. Under law, the Joyce's were the first ranchers to make beneficial use of the water. Their water rights were established under the Mining Act and the Prior Appropriation Doctrine, which drives Western water law. These water rights were clearly established under the Act and protected by the Idaho Constitution. But the federal government wanted to rewrite water right law. The problem that we saw with that was, first of all, it completely ignored the, the, the historical facts, which was these predecessors were out there in the 1870s, 1880s, and in the early 1900s, uh, and that's when the water rights were actually established. So it was just a, a, you know, a legal fiction, so to speak, to say that, uh, that the priority date should be shifted to 1934, which is the date uh, that the Taylor Grazing Act was established, and that's the date that the United States uh, insisted upon. The United States government was trying to make an end run in an attempt to rewrite a hundred years of court precedence, not to mention Congress's Mining and Homestead Acts. The government realized that most people don't have the fortitude, lawyer, or cash to stand up to the federal government. 
The feds knew that small ranchers, individuals, and businesses would compromise their legitimate water rights under pressure, no matter how baseless the government's claims were, simply because the individuals cannot afford to defend their rights against the U.S. government. Uh, but um, in the face of the opposition, with the full force and effect of the United States government coming against a small rancher, um, and you can pretty well sympathize, as I do, with them to say, well, I'm just going to have to compromise my rights. And uh, that, that's, that was unfortunate, um, but uh, the Lowry's and Nettletons didn't take that path, uh, thank goodness, and I commend them for their courage in doing that. Rancher Tim Lowry's operation spans to the west end of Jordan Creek near the Oregon border. And it became apparent when the Clinton administration first got into power and uh, Secretary Babbitt became Secretary of the Interior. There and read a speech that he delivered to, uh, I believe it was a, in Idaho, to a group of, of law students. And in that he was uh, t bemoaning the fact that the federal government back when the homestead days in the West was being settled let the water get away. He said they had the foresight to hang on to most of the land, but they let the water get away. And he told those students that they could have a career in water law and attempting to get that back to the federal government. Controlling the water rights meant unimpeded and absolute power over public lands. The ranchers were in for the fight of their life. They mortgaged their future to save the range, not just for themselves, but for anyone using public lands. The predecessors of LU and Joyce had, of course, had already established the water rights and the historical use of these ranges um, and appropriated the water as they indicated under state law. So then the issue became filing a claim with uh, the state of Idaho to secure those water rights in the adjudication process. Uh, those water rights were uh, protested by or objected to by the United States government, essentially the Bureau of Land Management. What it boiled down to is that the BLM and the United States filed competing claims against the two ranchers to secure water rights for the government. The BLM said they needed the water rights to manage grazing allotments. It was a brazen, aggressive move, but they had the money and legions of lawyers to send to court. Their actions started what would become a 10-year and very expensive legal battle. And I adjudicated those cases and took them to the Idaho Supreme Court and won a significant victory for the two ranchers uh, in the face of a lot of pressure for them to settle their cases and give up. And I have to commend the courage of uh, both uh, Tim Lowry and Paul Nettleton, the two ranchers that we're talking about here, uh, who really fought courageously against the United States government to secure their, their rights. And these are just, uh, you know, uh, typical uh, 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 red-blooded American cowboys uh, who are just trying to uh, make a living off the land. And uh, they are successful ranchers, um, but, you know, they have significant uh, obstacles to uh, running their, their operations, um, especially in the face of the competition that the United States government provided for them. What the federal government didn't figure on was Tim Lowry, Paul Nettleton, and their families' unflinching courage and determination to stand up for their rights in the face of extreme legal fees to prove the U.S. government wrong. We won every step of the way, but they kept, the federal government kept appealing all the way to the Idaho Supreme Court. Lowry says the feds were testing the courts because controlling the water was the first step in controlling the land. And so the federal government knew that they did not own the water, that that belonged to the states and under state law belonged to those that put it to beneficial use. The feds were embarrassed. To save face, they sent their legal team back to court in hopes of winning an appeal, any appeal. They just kept filing papers. Even after losing all appeals, the feds vowed a bitter, costly fight to the end. If they couldn't win in court, they would break the ranchers in the process.
Well, we won on all the legal points on uh, who owned the water. The Supreme Court agreed with us that the water belongs to the private individual that puts it to beneficial use. They denied in the Joyce case the federal government's claims because the federal government owns no cows cannot possibly have a stock water right. And they agreed with us that 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 water right is pertinent to the base property. That is the property that benefits from that right. And <clears throat> the point that we lost on, and which was a surprise to us, is that we were denied our attorney fees. That uh, rationale was that the Equal Access to Justice Act does not apply in a state court, even though that is the court that decides these issues. Nettleton and Lowry are now facing a $1.5 million legal bill for their victories in the Idaho courts and the appeals process. They didn't ask for the fight, but they are paying dearly for winning it. One place where we obviously were very disappointed was uh, in their treatment of our attorney's fees claim. Uh, we, on behalf of Paul and Tim and, and their ranches, uh, requested an award of attorney's fees to cover the cost of litigation against the United States. Um, we requested that both under state law and also under the Federal Equal Access to Justice Act, uh, which provides a mechanism for uh, folks who have prevailed in litigation against the United States to uh, request and obtain uh, attorney's fees. Nettleton says their bills got bigger with each appeal. First they told us 40000 and then they said it would probably be more like fifty. And, you know, they should have known better because they know how the government works. We didn't. And the government just kept appealing and appealing and stalling and, and, and filing more papers and whatever. I mean, it was just a whole thing was just to run the bill just as high as they could run it, pretty much. You think the government was doing that? The government, that? yeah, just to see if they could break us. The Joyce Land and Livestock Company and Lowry Branch are gearing up for another year. They're still in business, though heavily in debt. From 1865 to 2008, our roots run pretty deep here. Uh, it's not a situation that we're going to give up on. We're going to make it through some way, and God willing, we'll be here another 140 years or whatever. You know? I see it as a setback. I don't see it as anything fatal. Um, We've, we've fought a lot of battles to stay here, and we'll probably have more to fight in the future. The ranchers are happy to have survived the feds in court. They won major victories for ranchers that run cattle from North Dakota to New Mexico. Where we are today is that, unfortunately, these two ranchers are shouldering a burden of, uh, the financial burden that comes with 10 years worth of litigation, and that's unfortunate. Um, it's been my position, certainly, that um, it, they should be rewarded for their courage. They have paved the way for a lot of other ranchers uh, in Idaho. They've paved the way for a lot of folks who will be similarly situated in other states, in the western United States. And, and that was a long road, um, personally and otherwise, for them. Their victory is a victory for all. Sportsmen, ATV riders, all ag and mining operations now have secure rights based on this important legal case. We've definitely set a precedent for all other um, grazing interests uh, all over the West. I mean, not just probably in Idaho, but all over the West. I mean, we've proved that, that uh, a private individual can hold rights on public land. We've proved that 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 uh, um, those those rights can apply in a number of cases um, all over the West. I mean, we've got, we've got a water right now. That's never happened before. It's a precedent, and I I'm not real familiar with the law, but at this point, I would think anybody could use that precedent. There is rights on for private individuals on public land. 
Tim Lowry and Paul Nettleton must be recognized for the courage and fortitude they had in standing up for what was right in the face of overwhelming odds. The federal government, with its legions of attorneys paid for with our tax dollars, tried to steal what legitimately belongs to the ranchers in the West, water rights. If these two cowboys had not risked all they have and taken a stand, the West would have been changed forever. Their victory is a victory for all of us.